All right, good morning, everybody. Um, I am excited to bring you my latest interview with Lindsay, who has also recovered from hypothalamic amenorrhea and shares a bit about her story and what it took for her to recover and some of her thoughts on the process. Um, I'd hope to get these interviews out every week, but I just can't seem to manage to actually record an intro and put everything together uh, once a week, so I'm just going to get them out when I can, and um, hopefully they will still be helpful. Um, I'd encourage you to check out my blog at www.noperiodnowwhat.com slash blog. Um, lots of cool information on there, um, sort of a science-y approach to HA that you won't find other places. I just did a post on seed cycling and and whether it's valuable in HA recovery or not, um, answer is it's not. Um, most likely, uh, the seeds seem to be um, helpful and healthy in general, but there I, I couldn't find any rationale behind just like switching from one seed type to another. So anyway, check out my blog, and um, I hope you enjoy the interview with Lindsay, and have a great day. All right, so thank you so much for being with me today, Lindsay. I'm so excited to get to talk with you and learn a little bit about more about your journey and for you to share your story with other women who are going through this and hopefully those who are still working to recover and they can hear some of your insights from having gone through all of this. Um, so I have a few questions to ask you. Uh, it'll probably only take like 10 minutes, which is, you know, I figure shorter is better. Um, so to start with, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and the factors that played into your missing period, aka hypothalamic amenorrhea? Yeah, definitely. Um, so I was like a really big time runner throughout my whole 20s. I started running when I was in um, high school um, mm -hmm. and I loved it, but I was really slow. I wasn't like <laughs> super serious about it or anything. I always got like the most improved award um, every year. Mm -hmm. um, and I wasn't like super skinny or overweight. I was just kind of normal. Um, and I just liked running and everything was fine. Then I um, in my senior year of high school, I went through, like, my first, like, serious breakup, um, and there was just, like, a lot of stuff changing in my life, and I started, like, running a lot more. I found that it was, like, a really good day, good way to deal with, like, stress and anxiety, and, like, also around the same time, like, a friend of mine was, like, I'm gonna, like, my New Year's resolution is to cut out processed sugar, like, do you mm -hmm. want to do it with me? And I was, like, sure, and I had, like, literally zero, like, food or body image issues whatsoever at all at that point, but I think the combination of just like focusing more on like like restrictive eating and then like running more at the same time was just and probably I have some like innate like addictive susceptibilities or tendencies so that all was like the perfect storm mm -hmm. um and mm -hmm. suddenly I found myself like you know I had this like amazing new coping mechanism for the stress of life <laughs> and I lost like 15 pounds like oh, really wow. quickly and people were worried mm -hmm. and I was like kind of like actively restrictive around food and I just got into this like really horrible mindset um, it didn't last that long. I had, like, so many people around me who were worried and, like, mm -hmm. talked to me and stuff and didn't like that. And I, and, I, and I realized, you know, within a few months that, like, that was not a sustainable thing to do. And then I think what happens to a lot of people who, like, you know, I was never, like, severely anorexic or anything. I just had some issues. And then I, I because I never got to, like, a really, really bad place, I think I also never at that point was able to like recover fully and I just mm -hmm. was like okay I'm going to be really healthy and I'm going to be really into healthy eating and like healthy exercise and then like basically throughout my whole entire 20s after that I like I never really gained back the weight that I had lost but I wasn't I also like you know on the outside I didn't look like someone who had a problem I ran a lot I ate a lot um I'm sure I didn't eat enough for how much I was exercising mm -hmm. it was like mm -hmm. really a lot like it, <laughs> in college, I just, like, got even more into running. I was, like, running probably 60 or 70 miles a week. Oh, wow. I was still very thin. Um, and and I just got really used to, I think, a certain, a certain like, way of, like, having exercise in my life every day and, like, and not eating that much. And it was fine. Mm -hmm. That was my routine. Mm -hmm. And I felt, like, normal and in control as, as long as, like, something didn't interrupt my routine. I was on the pill. So oh, I had okay. no idea if I was getting my period or not. Um, and then, you know, in my, like late 20s, I switched to an IUD, a copper IUD. Mm -hmm. um, I was, like, in a relationship with the person who I would eventually marry, and I I was not on hormones anymore, and I was like, oh, hmm, I'm not getting my period. This is probably something that's not good. I, I should do something about this. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, so you just told me what led you to the realization that you needed to make some changes. Um, did you see doctors at that point, or did, did, did yeah, they? Yeah, so, yeah. well, I have one experience with a doctor that, like, haunts me forever. I saw a doctor 
when I was like a senior in college. Um, and I had actually, so I went off the pill briefly, Mm -hmm. um, senior year of college. Um, and I ended up going back on a few months later, but I, I went off because I was like, I had like lost a few pounds, um, from my, my normal baseline. And I, I think like some part of me was concerned. And even though I was getting a regular period from the pill, I just like had this instinct that, you know, I probably wouldn't be getting my period if I wasn't on the Mm -hmm. pill. I didn't know about HA at all, but, you know, in the running community, you hear stories about this. And so I went to my gynecologist and I was like, um, I just, I went off the pill. I want to, I'm, I'm a really intense runner. I'm thin. Um, I think, you know, I should, I want to see if I would, if I'm getting a normal period and see what happens, I want to stay off the pill for a little while. And my doctor, who I had a relationship with him for a long time, he was like a great doctor. I, I really liked him. He completely just like dismissed my concerns. And he's mm-hmm. like, Lindsay, you're like you're young, you're healthy, you're a runner, you have this like great active lifestyle, you're not trying to have kids anytime soon. Go back on the pill. Like, really don't worry about it. Like, would you wanna like do you wanna gain all this weight and like stop <laughs> running? Like that would be such a like a party pooper thing to do. Like when you wanna get pregnant one day, come back and see me, there's stuff we can do. Mm-hmm. And so like the the ninety percent of me that really wanted to hear that took over and like ten mm-hmm. percent of me that was like had some sense of self-preservation. I was like, okay, good. I don't have to worry about that. My doctor told me everything's fine. Mm-hmm. Um, and so then, yeah, and so then I did go back to doctors um, when I didn't get my period um, in my later 20s when I switched to an IUD. And I, I, they weren't as bad as that, mm-hmm. but none of them would say, like, they all just gave me this, like, like very soft messages about, like, well, maybe you could cut back on running a little bit, maybe try to gain five pounds, like, you know, they didn't, they didn't, like, sit me down and give me the, like, serious, like, talk that I needed or communicate the dangers for my overall health mm-hmm. that not getting a period mm-hmm. had. Um, so I just, you know, I needed a much stronger message that, than they were giving me because mm-hmm. I was, like, very, uh, like, it, it's when you're a runner and when you're used to eating a certain way for a long time, like, it takes a lot of, like, hard work to change that. There's a lot of momentum there, and it wasn't enough for, for me to do to truly make a dent at all. Uh-huh. So what did you, what did lead you to really make the changes? Mm. Um, you, <laughs> your book. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I initially, um, I mean, I think part of it was that, you know, I knew that, like, having kids, I, when I started making the serious changes, I wasn't trying to get pregnant, but I knew I wanted to at some point, like, in the next couple years, Mm -hmm. Um, and so that being more of a reality really helped. I'm actually really glad that I wasn't trying to get pregnant at the time, because I think that would just have been a lot more stressful and felt like a lot more pressure. Yeah, definitely. Um, But but it was definitely something that was, like, you know, on the horizon in the near term. I was, like, about to get married. Um, I did, I, like, really started making all these serious changes, like, in the lead up to my wedding, um, which was stressful a little bit in its own ways, but... Um, but yeah, like I, I had been like researching online more about how to do this and I wasn't really finding anything good. I was actually like running a little bit more cause I was like, well, I need to gain some weight. And so maybe if I run more, I'll have a bigger <laughs> appetite and like I'll be able to gain weight. <laughs> so hilarious to me. Uh, <laughs> um, and so then I, I somehow I found, I think that maybe your book had just come out around mm-hmm. then, or maybe I found, I don't even remember. I must've found website or something but anyway I I started like I started understanding that HA was a thing and you have to do this thing called going all in to mm-hmm. recover and when I first heard that idea I was like oh my god I really want to recover my health is really important to me but like that's I'm never gonna go like all in and gain all this weight I was like hearing all these stories of women who did that and I was like that's great I really want to do that but like and anything but that I, mm-hmm. I won't do that mm-hmm. and then I, I ordered your book and I read it um and I don't know I think there's this like I think this happens to a lot of people, like, who are going through this process that, like, at first this idea seems, like, impossible and, like, you could never do it, and that's normal, and then you just have to, like, kind of, the contradictions of your life, if you sit with them for, like, a few weeks, they just, like, mount and mount to this Mm -hmm. point where you're like, shit, like, I have, I guess I have to do this, like, that sucks, but, like, I, like, what else can I do? Mm -hmm. Um, It kind of reminds me, like, when I was a kid, so my parents are both lawyers, and, whenever, this is, like, a tangent, but it makes sense, like, whenever they had a rule that I didn't like, like, as, as like, Jewish lawyers that they are, they would, like, sit me down and be, like, this is why you can't go to unsupervised parties, like, and they would talk about, like, liability and their responsibility and just mm-hmm. parents and blah, 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 and by the end of it, I'd be, like, well, yeah, you have a point, like, okay, I won't, I won't argue with that, like, that, that totally makes sense, um, and so I think it was, like, a similar process, I was, like, mm, I really, really don't like this, it's, like, a horrible pill to swallow, but, like, 
I just, I have no argument for keeping doing things the way I've been doing them. So, Mm -hmm. like, I think, you know, I just got, it it took, like, maybe two months of me kind of having to, like, sit with this this horrible idea of going, of, like, giving up running completely. Um, And during that time, I was, like, doing less and less and less exercise, and I was, like, you know, the the eating part, I think this is true for a lot of people, was a lot easier for me. It was easy for me to just, like, eat a lot more, Mm -hmm. but I was clinging to this, like, almost, like, it's like a homeopathic symbolic amount of like exercise. <laughs> um, I was like, just, and then I, I like all of these messages were starting to make more sense. And I was like, well, it's really silly that there's like a catch 22 here that like, if I'm doing enough exercise that it's making me feel good in any way, then that like, if it's, if it's enough to make me feel good, then it's enough to be like bad for my recovery efforts. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so, and it's also going to like, <clears throat> prolong when I can like just return to exercising and having exercise in my life in a normal way again like I don't have to just be so careful and delicate with myself forever like this is stupid I should just stop exercising um and so I did and it was um it was so much easier than I thought it would be like the hardest part was like making the decision to do that Mm -hmm. the first Mm -hmm. couple weeks were really hard I felt so like I had so much pent-up energy and it was like awful but I literally like woke up one day maybe like three weeks to being all in I was like, oh, like, I can just have a normal day and not exercise, and it's fine. Like, I, that's that's just something I can do uh-huh, now. Like, uh-huh. it doesn't, like, I could do this indefinitely, like, as long as it takes. That's totally fine. And I, I think that, like, it's funny because I was so close. Like, I think you need to have an unbroken several-week period of not exercising to get to that point. And yeah. I had always, like, you know, I could go, like, a week or something, and then it would just be too much. And I was selling myself short because it got so much easier after I just went three weeks or so of, like, that. So how long did it actually take you um, to recover? Then, so so once I went all in, um, I got my period six weeks later, mm-hmm. um, and and I don't think that like if I had just decided to go all in from like day one, I think it probably would have taken longer than six weeks. Like mm-hmm. when I was like sort of half in, I think that was doing something. Yeah. Um, but um, but yeah, it was like shocking to me how like I can't believe how like I was doing so little exercise already before I did nothing at all. Um, but I think that the difference between a little bit and nothing is actually pretty big. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so what were the top three things would you say that helped you to change your lifestyle and your thoughts about what what is healthy? Um, I think the number one is reading your book. Like for me, I'm someone who, um, I don't know, everyone likes to say that they're rational and no one's rational, but I like to think sometimes that I respond to like rational arguments and mm-hmm. understanding the science and like really like understanding the physiological processes behind what causes amenorrhea, um, and, like, why, why does, like, you know, not exercising even just a little bit, why does, like, eating a lot of carbs and a lot of calories in general, why does that help? That was, that was very convincing to me. So, Mm -hmm. like, I think reading your book was an essential piece. The other part was the community, the, um, like, the Facebook group that you have. Um, like, I, like, it, it was just, like, for someone who has, I spent like a decade living my life in a certain kind of way. Mm -hmm. Um, and I don't think I ever would have been able to like make such a drastic change if I didn't have the example of all these women who had done the same thing and were fine. And then I could like interact and talk to them. That was like so, so powerful. That was definitely like an essential piece of it. Um, and then I don't know, this last one I don't think is like essential for everyone. Um, I don't want to say that you need this to recover, but it, it really did help me that like, the idea of having kids was something that I wanted to do soon mm-hmm. and not mm-hmm. just like a hypothetical far in the future. That was, that was, it gave me a little kick in the butt, but yep. I needed to be serious about it. Yeah. Have you ever had a bone density scan? Yeah. So I actually had one, I had, I had like two or three stress fractures when I was in college. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm like a petite small runner. And so like they, like after like the second one, they gave me a bone density scan and they, I don't remember the exact results, but it wasn't really bad. Mm-hmm. Like I, I was, I was pleasantly surprised. I think it was like, on the low side of normal, um, but they were like, this is in the normal range, that's fine. Uh-huh. Um, so, so uh, hopefully, I don't know, maybe like, maybe being on the pill had like some minor protective effect for me, or maybe it didn't, and or like, you know, maybe if I had one again now, it would be bad, but um, yeah, I, I'm, yeah. I, I, that, reason, that I'm like, can... not very confident that my bone density is as good as they said it was on that test, but maybe yeah. it is. Yeah, because that can be another way that women get a kick in the pants is by getting a bone density scan and kind of getting a little bit of a shock from that. So Right, um, yeah. Well, and the, well, the other thing, like, the, the, for some reason, the bone density stuff didn't scare me as much as the, like, the, all the, like, like heart and, like, brain impacts long term. Mm-hmm. Like, that really mm-hmm. motivated me, yeah. so... 
Yeah. Yeah. All right. So my last question is um, for a woman who's struggling with missing periods now, what one suggestion would you have? Um, I think the one suggestion I would have would be like, just do what you need to do to convince yourself to go all in Mm -hmm. because it's so much better and easier afterwards. Like, it's like I would you couldn't pay me a million dollars to go back to the life that I was like trying to hold on to so hard before um which was and so like it's just I don't know I think it's just so much better um to be recovered from HA like I exercise and I eat whatever I want and my I I don't like I it's just it's just better um Mm -hmm. and so and you can't have that without going all in like you really you can't I think when you get to the point of having HA you can't sort of like slowly moderately transition to a healthy lifestyle you need to go all in for like the vast majority of people so go all in that's that's my advice awesome thank you so much Lindsay. this has been great i really appreciate your time and i know that others will also so i'm going to stop the recording now thank you and